or whatever it is wherever you are. All right, so I remember last time I was playing around with some an alternate selection method that was kind of defining bounds. Yeah, this is some interesting stuff here. You know, we're almost we're almost like wavering along our upper score selection limit. <clears throat> and I had yeah, I'd neutralized the maximum speed limit for opening and closing. Probably okay. Uh, so we've got, uh, every time we reload, we have to do that, so we don't want to do that. So the experimental stuff... Oh, right, we're trying to do the double wiggle, and I think I actually ended up removing. <clears throat> Just outright moving. Uh, upper bound. Uh, oh, this is actually a different picker. Pick by bounds, which needs... Min. Just score bound. So I was taking that, and I was taking this. Wiggle was the two of them, and we scaled it to a different point. And I didn't quite have that. Oh, change tab. Didn't quite have that where I wanted it. I don't think. Uh, did I have a graphing of song list item? Right. I had made that conditional. On if it was visible, oops. Okay, so this is drawing the arrows, not the mark. So there's upper bound. Or maybe I should put this back. And just do something like this. No, still not visible. Unless it's always picking a thing that's exactly there. Is this a data problem? 
so if we make lower bound back to the constant, or we used to be drawing it, we see our selection there, but we're not drawing anything. Well, bounds is currently dumping out some stuff. It's making the reloads very spammy. So why are we not drawing? So I'm doing something to that. I guess it's the way to see it. It's a little bit weird that updating this doesn't do that. Uh, or bound. <clears throat> Okay, we have not much wiggle this time. So we are going, essentially picking things between a upper bound curve and a lower bound curve. It's got a very, very slow flow on it right now. Yeah, so the way this gets applied <clears throat> would essentially need to have a higher, well, no, the score bound's still valid. And in theory, it could still pick songs that were above our, on the high end of the notes per second there. It's just not trying to do so. Well, I can't see the value. It could actually be there. Yeah, that's above. That's the same wiggle applied to both bounds. But the typical song selection appears to be much easier now. As we're not trying to pick faster things occasionally. And our baseline for minimum speed probably needs to get bumped up. Which is actually just a setting. Well... And you see, I actually want... Right, because that was a... A range was a constant there. That's not going to. F oh. And then what do you do if it. Well, it managed to pick something. Oh, it, yeah, because you can still pick very, very fast things sometimes. Hmm. But if we do that, then our upper end has to be... Well, really, I still want my low, low end. It's really kind of in... Oop, I'm on... Right, 
Right, that's not having any effect now. <laughs> now, wait a minute. So this is... Yes, I may have to do a difference in the way I apply wiggle to that. Or to both of them, even. So range is scaled by that. I think it works to do scaled by shape. Well, that's more like a multiply curve. So then we get less wiggle up front and more in the middle. That's looking very tight though. And we're starting out at 3.0? Well, yeah, we're getting minimum two point, minimum two. Eight, eight, seven. Uh, does that solve the problem with starting lower here? Do we ever see one now? It's looking like twos to me. What if we do zero? Something else is going on here. <clears throat> so in theory that's actually that we still don't have this in a fully functional form we could evaluate it anywhere
which being able to set these once and then just look at them it would kind of require Why are we bottoming out at two now? Well, that might just be the selection of songs that are currently up. Um... Could we... No, we're using bottom. Is this a data error or is this a... Okay, so these points are still picking those, but some other things are able to pick low if we let them. So that's just the particular set of songs we're picking right now. So probably... This is still reasonable. Uh, we need a fastest speed, which we don't have a good way to set right now. feels somewhat narrow. All right, so we're experimenting with that. I would like the curve visualizer to be able to look at any of these. While not having a maximum, having the auto maximum on that could be a little awkward. That pretty much means turning these into functions and then passing the eval to them wherever we're doing that, or the stage number to them wherever we're doing that. Or this, the um, stage percent rather than the stage number. All right, so this is the whip here. We turned off that print. Which I think maybe pick by bounds wasn't tuned. What was I printing out here? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm still playing with bottom top and that stuff in terms of making things. Okay, fine. Uh, just kind of very hard to get a hang on what this is doing. So if we remove the eval flow from all this, then we can reference these curves, which this is currently wiggle. Uh, this is base. This is constant.
Uh, the rest of this was down here. We would kind of have to do that. Was that another one? That was actually it's the function itself. All right. So now uh, build flow. I guess we're only using one or two functions right now. So we've got wiggle. Wiggle base. Items I wiggle base. Some of these are going to be our pick functions that we're not currently using. So you're now a function. Oh, wait. And that's actually sort of a non-trivial formula. So we essentially have to do stage minus 1 over n minus 1. And we have to do that everywhere we're doing this. Uh, that's in pick by range. <clears throat> I'm not using those right now. And that takes care of all of the wiggle thingamabobbies in this file. Um, so this needs to get a couple of these things. Uh, which, which is this? This is pick by range. Okay, that was not what I thought. Pick by bounds. So... I almost need a function for this. We're back to pick by range. Uh, NPS score bound. Uh, difficulty arrows. So actually, we're back to this where we want. And apparently, well, this is still I. We're testing if it's current. Nope. Oh wait, this was a function call. It actually had more than that. I... No, I forgot my minus one here. We're back to pick by range, pick by bounds. This was actually using this for our iteration. Okay, so actually local X. Could be their local min is uh, 
Well, dot square bound of x, and this is one to stages. Uh, no, because we still have all this, the song list item stuff. Uh, and this has an x already, so we need some new nomenclature for that. So this gets a n, which we use here. As you don't really understand global height, that gets handled somewhere else, I think. Uh, no, it's like zoom. Hmm. Well, it's this in song list item. Graph. Song list, song list scale, which is kind of assuming some of those things, I think. Yeah, so this is how I need to get some of that stuff come between them. Uh, that means as it stands, I have to pick, pass. Because you don't have number of stages. So I kind of have to pass that down. As some sort of factor of that. Well, we can almost and some of these might become meta characters. Oh. Yeah, a little bit. No. Seven substitutions. That sounds a bit more reasonable. Uh, uh, now that is set selection. Didn't you have like five arguments or six? Oh, self was one. Uh, did you already have? You did not. And then we have it again. This had it.
So it's a little bit messy. Attempt to call a number value. 869. Oh. I'm not quite sure how that was working. No? Am I misunderstanding how my for loops work? I, oh, I equals. Not I1 or in. Eight sixty-nine. So I still got it wrong. Doesn't look wrong to me. Oh okay, I guess I didn't hit save. And the upside of this is that if we enable this, we should be able to say Uh, okay, so now that's uh, I think current flow is actually the global. No. Pick by bounds, current flow. Oh, no, because this is saying curve of the already evaled thing. So this still has to be... Because you're still expecting that. Didn't I rotate you? Oh, it was probably in here. So that's the abstract representation. We don't really have a, a sense of what the maximum is. Uh, and graph data, is that only used here right now? No, it is not. So the auto scaling effect of that may still be useful. Clear, add point, calculate the max, <clears throat> iterate once to find the max, and then scale all items to that. And I would have to be I could set this up to get past a max and then have like an auto scale graph or something. Actually, this is. Hmm. <laughs> the things I'm graphing are scaled to. Yeah, that's the abstract for certain purposes. And then if we do, so now we could swap this out with, and we'll get something, or, Hmm. 
Hmm, it seems there's less separation of points in these. Uh, maybe that's just a stretch. But I would have to know what I'm graphing if I haven't unscaled. Clear, we have to add one point. The first point seems to get lost. Well, you'd almost want to have that before order-wise. Uh, but that's also, a, well, that would define it. Okay, that's not an error. Uh, so NPS lower bound. That's probably going to be a zero. No, this is max. Uh, probably like a ten. Okay, oh, that's that was passed to eval flow and promptly ignored. Okay, so that lets us do that. Actually, now we're getting into more specialized curves. So we have multiple things to keep around. So score bound uh, would have a maximum value of 100, probably? No. Oh, no, it's, it's one because it's actually a fraction that we multiply for display. So that lets us write this because this is a bound. Although there's less shape on that than I expected. Uh... And then the wiggle, we've got what, um, wiggle base, which is probably a zero one. Yeah, so that's our baseline curve. Uh, wiggle range is probably a zero one or, or negative, no. Ah. Do we have to redo this again? I don't think so. Oh, right, because that's got that as a constant factor. Okay, okay. The amount it can wiggle at each point. Uh, what was I? Uh, upper band we've kind of got off, selection range. Oh, that's that range. Wait, so if that's wiggle, right, so that's wiggle and base. Well, that's actually kind of useless. 
and with go with BMX one. Yeah, so that's its range. So that's actually starting at a non-zero, which is interesting. So the base is there. We don't currently have an exposure on this. Uh, I did something very wrong there. How do I get this this wrong? All right, scale, multiply curve, eval flow. Uh, I guess probably a zero one ish. Uh, oh, it actually uses zero as zero. Okay. Okay, so we are seeing the scaling effect towards the end, but it's not terribly big. Yeah, it has more effect there. Uh, our wiggle base does start at non zero. Uh, right, because we did that indented on either side by the amount we're going to allow that to change. We don't really seem to go down, we only seem to go up. That might be because I started scaling it down at the extremes. even though the intent of the original bit was to ensure that with the wiggle added, we would not extend below our bottom. So we are kind of double raising the, the low end. I didn't save. Okay, so that might explain. Although once again, we have this current pick that's getting some picking some twos here. All right, so that is wiggle, which we're not use, actually using in our, well, no, because it's the base for lower bound and score bound. Uh, 
All right, so we see a little bit more effect on that. And maybe our low end needs to tweak back. No, that would make it lower than it used to be. Hmm. Or higher, depending on how you look at it. And then NPS lower bound. I think I might need to tweak some of the scaling of this graph. Because I think we're actually going about here to here. I kind of fudge, yeah, I kind of fudge this on. Uh, there's also really no XY on this. When in fact, it should be somehow based on these parameters. Uh, curve graph. So, what was... Wiggle base is my baseline curve, which was feeling... I wasn't feeling this effect much in the song selection. So now I can modify this and have it represented there. So how did this work? That is the percentage across, this is the percentage there. A little bit more of a lead-in. Not quite the upslope of our other curve we were using, but... So that's a small tweak. Do we see that at all in here? That ends up being a counter curve. Okay, that's better. And that's that with wiggle. Yeah, yeah, the wiggle almost ends up washing out the effect of that ramp. Keep wanting to complect this thing. <laughs> what if 
mean, the max is sort of free. Uh, not all of these are on the same scale, so it doesn't really... Yeah, yeah. Our upper and lower bound are in different polarities. So it's kind of hard to overlay things. I could almost say that this is going to be required maximum. Because then I could do things like curve graph Uh, score bound. Well, those are actually kind of different than the colors I've been using elsewhere. because uh, that one cleared it. And you can't really see those together because they rely on different scaling factors. Although if I did the... My scaling function is weird because it uses two points right now. Uh, what is that? NPS lower bound. Uh, I'm going to have to close out eval flow. Nope, that reflects it over there. We actually need to do a not a scale. It's an add curve of constant negative not negative one. Yeah, I have to invert it and uh, we have to get out to evolve flow. Is it constant factor? That should be two. Uh, oh, no, because this, well, this one was at 20. Or at 10. No, because it'll be 10, not 20. I mean, that actually ends up somewhat representative of the other graph. I mean, this thing would need to be similarly inverted to be representative of its effect, but that's a zero one, so it's like, eh.
That's defining a selection range in which we can pick. Uh, it's not going to line up perfectly because we have to do a bunch of fidget fidgeting with the graph to try and get evaluation points to line up. Okay, that does get to zero, it's just that's going up farther than I would have expected. 100 percentage of grapher-wise, it feels like. Yeah, maybe that's one-tenth. Oh, actually, I think I did have I had it at 0 0.8 before, not a point, not 1.0. Uh, probably redraw, yeah, redrawing these graphs. These are very similar to the graph I took out that was slowing everything down. So redrawing all these graphs is what's slowing us up right now. So how do we Is this a model we can work with? This is well Discounting that this is a very manually defined curve. This is described by a low value and a high value for the score maximum, a low value and high value, whatever, vice versa, because inversion. For minimum notes per second, a wiggle factor. All right, so this gives us one interface to our high and low value. So the way I'm drawing wiggle factor appears to not be accurately representing its actual implementation. Oh, because I'm probably not including the scaling effect in here. So I'm gonna have to revisit that. Slowest speed has been a single number because I tried to do as a flat bottom for a while. Fastest speed I've taken out for the moment to see how that plays out.
I do not have separate items for the score right now. We do have a setting for wiggle. Since everything's going to be slow right now. And that's the number of stages. And then that allows this to go up closer because we're not going to add the wiggle to it. Could I define, I could probably, well, I mean, I could redefine the sine wave so that it would be a multiplier of whatever curve you had. And the wiggle is clearly very out of date with how I'm doing things. because that is not properly placed at all. These high resolution graphs are slowing me down. I mean, I could probably do less than a thousand. We've got continuous curves here. Sometimes they stretch out, you see some points. We only affect one end of slowest speed, so that's an extra setting. I was wondering if we could somehow describe like both of these as like our high to low ratio. They would kind of move the ends of both of those. Which I guess could amount to affecting this curve. But then how do you describe that? Because you're kind of, re you kind of want to set the highest point here and the slowest point here and then still keep this reasonable. Plus there's the fact that this is notes per second is an absolute unit. Uh, score is somewhat player relative. And this is where it gets hard. I suppose this is also constraining us to certain relationships between score and notes per second. We could define different wiggle parameters for those. But then you might, could you not have certain combinations? I stand to work with my rig expansion as well.
Do we need to wiggle both of those? <clears throat> I mean, variation in score tends to mean some variation in challenge. But these are limits. Well, at one point I tried to do a thing where we were picking between where these were two unwiggled curves and we were trying to pick something in the space between them by some variation, which was kind of a complicated concept to think about and describe and do settings for. Well, the, 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 the other problem was that we had to scan through all the songs to get these notes per second range. So that's what we were picking in between. you had to have the range to pick something in it. This just establishes the limits and lets the song list order take care of it. So as it stands, um, I might want to tweak the settings a little bit for the way this responds to it. Okay, I might possibly want a slower opening. Oh, that's, yeah, because the way we're doing it right now, that brings down everything. And then we'd want to bring up the middle a bit, <clears throat> which is a thing that I don't currently have as a setting. To replace some of the fastest speed stuff. And slowest speed needs two settings. And then what does this harder and easier actually mean if we've got all these settings going on? Right now it's this weird proportional thing of the score upper bound. So I might want to bump that up a little bit in the middle. <clears throat> And I think I'm going to have to define separate settings for that. So that gives us... We want harder and easier to mean something simple here. But it's like so indirect on the main screen. Number of stages, amount of variation you get. Two settings for slowest, explicit settings for the score. And then should these even be on the same wiggle settings? But then you have different, then you have wiggle range as a setting for both. So I like the original system in that it was very direct, it wasn't too hard to explain. And the problem was we've got a speed limit. Uh, I've sort of remove this 
This only places a lower limit, so that doesn't do that. This keeps us from doing those things we're really bad at. This is a little bit of the same level stuff going on. Uh, we're not going to be hard selecting it though, we're just, put, just putting limits on things. All right, I could use a break. I keep getting to this point where I'm... I've gotten slightly better visualization tools, but it's still a really nasty problem. Designing things that have all, that cover all of your use cases while still being simple is extremely hard. But I'm gonna be back in a few minutes. Steam name, but just somebody came in and said hi, and he said he had the game, so I'm like, hey, I haven't played much multiplayer, let's check it out. And I figured, uh, probably better if he hosted the game, since I'm also streaming. So uh, I, I saved that world lost in the cave, so it'll be fun getting out. I need to put it up in a second or so. Oh, oh somebody clip it. <laughs> Sorry, new baby. We have Max, baby. <laughs> Ik denk dat we dit gaan verliezen, één man. Yo, yo, yo. Ga naar die auto, die auto is 2 HP, gozer. Kijk, in de cirkel, in de cirkel. Ik ben Nice. Nee, uh, niet meer shiften, niet meer shiften. We hebben echt te weinig fuel nu. Nee, 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 we hebben niet nodig. We hebben ja, achter. Oké, okay, hou je wapen goed gekregen. Jij moet die goede wapen hebben. Oké, okay, ik reload hem nu. Push hem, push hem, push hem, push hem. Oh, hij is bijna dood. Ik ben bijna dood, jij bent je vakken. Kut, Amar, bijna nice. Ja! Now he didn't get XP. He did, but not much. 
because he didn't kill that. And let's kill this thing. Okay, welcome back. I probably need to keep putting this problem on the back burner. Work on some other stuff for a while. Uh, keep on playing a little bit. See how... Because I do have this, like, implemented now. I still need to do some stuff to adjust settings properly. But I don't, if I'm trying to like get rid of these factors, I'm not sure I need to be doing UI for them. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, we need to do that. Uh, that'll be UI stuff. UI stuff. Uh, maybe that coordination tr coordinate translation will be useful regardless. Uh, so we're not testing that anymore, we'll kind of do that. That's done, it's kind of done. So these are some other things that I could just kind of get my head off of that problem for a bit. Uh, so I'm always trying not to do this one thing. And we want the curves off for a little bit. And that's the fact that we don't see any points there is one of the things I want to work on. Uh, so the function conversion was a little bit inconvenient, but it works. And maybe we can find a better way to deal with that as we go forward, I don't know. Uh, okay, so now that we're gonna be reloading, we go back to here. All right, so we're not really doing with. Eh, eh, maybe that still qualifies. <clears throat> so we've got this initial load screen. We wanted to make sure we're doing a little bit of training every time. Oh, you know what? I actually need that weight. Uh, well, there's game start weight, which is different. And then there is. In fact, that every time we come through here, we're essentially not graphing on the first pass. Uh, pick. Incremental update, incremental graph predictions. Scored steps, theta white.
is this. Okay, so things we can evaluate, they're scored. <clears throat> Wait. All right, that's the table. Incremental history. Is our number of iterations? Oh, because I was graphing this at times, and it's still a way to keep track of that. So we're keeping track of an incremental step. Here's a local to this screen, starts at one. Gradient descent is doing the theta, which our theta is preserved. So every time we reload, we don't see any points. Uh, what if we made this is start as long as our initial one? Yeah, we eventually start seeing that. So it's something like the first pass doesn't get drawn. And then we continue updating. Why is that? Is it being set? Uh, well, I could be uh, be the only graph on this screen. space for this. Uh, color is going to be white. That's not a question. The question is what are we passing and when? Okay, so we're clearly passing things to it. We're iterating through our points. Okay, we Oh, we're continuing to update now. So we actually got through a cycle about the same time we did that. Those look like coordinates to me. Even on the first pass. Oh, that's right. There's something like we have to add the point to the graph. but it might not be there right away. So we can't update it. Yeah. Or you would have to re-grab this so that it existed, but it might still not be loaded.
Error running up to index field. Well, after the first one, it sort of worked. Points and points in. Could we say if n equals points? Then we're going to add another one. So that it will be there next time. Attempt to get length of, OK, if So it still attempts to get the length. So we actually have to say if points then if and then it stops working. Oh, because it's never then equal to the number of points. We always have to be one step ahead in adding an extra one to make sure that we've got no. Because this gets it so far out ahead. Hmm. <laughs> We're always getting it one step ahead, so it's never equal. If we update a point, and that's the last point, then give me another one for next time. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Oh, on the first pet yeah, okay, 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 okay. 
on the first pass, we have to add the point for this one. Maybe on that one, because I, I really don't like doing this double fetch. We never hit the case where it exists. So if we have to add a point, we have to add a point for this and Always add two. Okay, no errors. We're drawing immediately. That's actually even getting a fair number of points in there. Well, it's kind of trivially never going to be equal to that. But if it's the last point, add another one. Uh, first time through, add this one for this, which will have to be next time. And we can see if it's there. And one for next time. So we always have to be one point ahead, which probably means, yeah, there's a point up in the corner that's just going to be stuck there for our last one. But well, that's kind of what we have to do. Uh, and this addresses note. Minimum iteration, maximum cost. Selection snapshot. No oh, number of selection snapshot. There is none. Because we haven't, haven't have not picked yet. Uh, And we've achieved cost or minimum iterations overall. So we want to say this is almost like a separate mode or a separate screen, except. We want to be able to go, go here and have the exact same code. So it's kind of in the same screen. Now, and we're setting a bunch of local variables. Uh, so perform pick does that. <clears throat> So this is going to have to be looking at button presses uh, when we are sort of in this stage. 
And then this will not... Well, I guess it would auto-switch if we got to like, maximum iteration. Bump flow, bump flow. Trans new screen. Menu down. So it's not that. Input. If entering song, and go to there, else, if it's greater than zero, aha, if it's greater than zero. And that's our only condition. Now, did that need a parameter? Flow frame. Uh, well, so let's minimum iterations per stage. So we would want this to wait. Uh, well, this is only in the, the first one. So that means that there would essentially be no minimum iteration. Do we force these parameters at all? Or just let you stop it whenever you uh, feel it's good enough? And this, and this, and either of these conditions. And that guarantees that it does end. Okay, so we're still enforcing this. This is the automatic switch. Uh, oh, but this is all... There is no awareness of whether it's stage one here. And that is in global flow DJ dot stage. If it's stage zero, we reset stuff. So essentially, The automatic switch only happens uh, if load eg dot stage is greater than zero, and we're greater than here. Uh, yeah, 
that greater than zero. And I guess we can keep these for that automatic switch. We're still trying to get to these conditions. But any time you can interrupt it. Oh, we need a sound effect there. Uh, default controls. So we can interrupt that to pick right away. Uh, we'd have to do a model reset. Well, no, actually, no, because it's going to wait. What can I, in theory, it's going to wait on enter. But we have to do the model reset. Uh, which is a theta reset, essentially. Uh, so stage equals zero. All right, so starting from scratch, we can start right away with that if we want to. Or, um, this is still at stage zero, we can let it run for as long as we want to. try and get the better model. And I could perhaps try to show my sort of suggested minimum level. And then I will need to update this essentially to say, um, oh, what I need, do need to do, because uh, there is still a stage where if we have no selection, then we have two conditions. If incremental history is greater than minimum iteration, is it maximum iteration? Yeah, maximum iteration. Uh, then we will do this. Uh, because and, 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 how does an or even work into that? Mm. It's a big, long condition. Technically, I'm duplicating. And then that no. So yeah, that stopped. Uh, then uh, we want to set, and it looks like.
We got, um, why are we giving a syntax error? Because it would have an end. What? Because this one is a separate if. Aha. And we might want to set this to a slightly smaller number for testing. And the other thing I wanted to do was see if I could do some sort of like temperature-based update to accelerate this. Although it looks like the first steps of the model are, or the progression are different than where I'm used to seeing it end up. So 2,000 steps is still a bit. And that feels like it stopped, but has not ended. Uh, might need to be greater than or equal to there. Yeah, so the first steps seem a little bit off. Now, maybe maximum iterations actually shouldn't apply on the first round. If you just want to let it sit there and train, you could. But then I'd have to have... Oh, because we're actually keeping a cost history. Are we only using that for a limit? Steps less than one. Uh, history. Training cost, test cost. Anyway, yeah, a lot of this is test code. There's incremental update. Uh, it's not even. No, that's that history. Right, cost history. Right, that's not what I'm, right, because I was doing some things that graphed that at various times. So maybe I need to work on pulling some of that code out. Because that sets limits on there. Now, where is the amount we adjust by?
Is that alpha? Yes. So we could just for kicks. And I think we've tested this now. Oh, we had a couple of negative points there. <laughs> so the first, so the, the early passes are not so great when you're overshooting like that. That's something we might want to reduce over time as we narrow in. But it does seem to be adjusting a little bit faster. That's a different alpha. It's probably way too much. Adder chost inf. Wow, we were actually really close to going infinite there. So this would be based on what we base this on, the size of cost history? Uh, and what is, what is steps? All oh, right, 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 right. If there's no steps, then can't really do anything. If we wanted to do a heat-based type of thing, So we know that staying at point three is too much. Point two is still pretty slow. Uh, maybe it actually needs to get bigger as we get tighter. Well, to keep on accelerating, but... So there's the concept of temperature in these systems where you set off at a high temperature moving things quickly and then as you get better you shrink it. So that you're able to make finer and finer adjustments. It starts to seem making pretty fine adjustments. Kind of hoping we could get uh, and this is not even like if I've been running for a really long time as well tuned as it can get.
Uh, are we able to evaluate? Well, that is a cost history. We can see how much we changed last time. And try to affect alpha to change more if it's not changing very fast? That could get really awkward. So with this data set, the faster alpha is working fine. Whether it's converging any faster, So I needed the theta reset to test this. Uh, so this works. Is it not English? N. Uh, so help text. Uh, Back exit. Uh, we're still able to do settings during this for certain things. Oh, we have to define a separate string for each one. All right, so default help text. Uh, this is right now based on controls. Uh, and that does have to change. Does that mean training is its own set of controls? And they wouldn't, but I do sometimes want to change the start music while that's going. Which means it won't show you some of the help for some of the things. <laughs> if it was something about selections, selection snapshot. This is default. Uh, I left that there. And and this needs to be false in all of these modes. Uh, 
So does that ever set it? Oh. Uh, sh we need to restart it anyway, sure. Oh, and it remembered that it was full screen before. So we've got two of them on right now. Um, is that perchance the default settings of visible? Yeah. No, because I have to do this. Uh, actually, it's not going to be start. It is... Oh, it's not, no, it's not even, uh, it's more like, nope, nope, that's the back. And that's text, so we don't get to see that what that looks like until we restart. And that says, run at the model we got. Uh, and we have to do something to make sure that that updates our controls. Which is probably going to mean... That when we perform pick... Uh, yeah, can we actually get set view? So maybe actually set view. Is kind of appropriate. Except that all of this other stuff happens here. Uh, maybe set view should just do a set controls, current controls. Uh, we reload it again. Uh oh. Uh, this doesn't exist yet. Well, you don't set view, so we can just reorder that. First, I don't. Oh no, some of the individual controls will though. They will change the view.
Okay, so that updates that. Uh, yeah, I kind of don't like that semicolon. What I really want to say is something like, um, you know, stop it whenever you want. And maybe that's more of a main screen thing. And now we're back to things where we ain't gonna have to evaluate how it looks in game. I almost need, you well, know, the sad thing is that it almost needs text to say, well, you know, we get better models if we run longer, but it's waiting a long time. It is interesting that there's sort of this initial shape to it. I guess that's just kind of adding everything together as is. leading to a tendency to predict better scores for harder songs because the estimated scores are dropping for these mid-range things. And it's like they're kind of going up over here on the high end. Of course, this, this is potentially player dependent. Or maybe there actually is a... Well, no, because that's just... This is the range of my best scores. And it tends to have an optimistic view of... the harder songs. when everything is just neutral. Hmm. And then I've currently got a point at which we won't burn CPU forever. <laughs> but maybe that initial one should be able to run forever? Well, I'd have to allow it to continue training in that circumstance. And not have the limit out. Uh, so I already removed that. We tried to make it train a little bit faster. I'm not sure it makes a big difference, actually. Uh, allow initial training to 
run as long as player wants. All right, now it really is starting to get late. So I'm actually going to play this for a little bit. Uh, I am going to break stream. Uh, so, well, I'm, 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 done, I'm done programming for now. I am going to be back to play this game. I'm going to break stream to change settings, because right now I'm on high resolution, low frame rate. I want the, the notes to have a little bit better frame rate. Uh, so I'll be back in a bit, uh, if you're, if you're here for programming, thanks for hanging out, uh, thanks for everybody who's hosting me. Let's look at the usual suspects. I'm normally doing programming in the morning and then, you know, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, switching over to Step Mania. Sometimes around now, we'll see how it plays out with the clock changes. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit with the new settings and only a few more minutes to get the pad set up and everything. So, uh, bye, maybe see you later.